I'm delighted to be hosting this panel discussion today, which will be looking at how you can transform your business with KNX. We'll be looking at what KNX is, typical KNX applications within the home, and the opportunity KNX presents to home technology integrators. To help me answer these questions, we're joined by a panel of KNX experts. So please let me introduce them. Let me start with you, Vladimir. Can you briefly introduce yourself, your business, and your connection with KNX? Hi, my name is Vladimir. I'm the founder and director of Intex Service Ltd. Uh, we've been created in 2014. Actually, we've been created thanks to KNX. And since that time, we're working with the KNX mainly in sort of home technology business from 2010 and delighted to work with the KNX and be part of the group. Very good. Right, let's move along. Olaf, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I can can do so. So my name is uh, Olaf Stutzenberger. You can read it here. And I'm now uh, with uh, ABB more than 20 years and uh, started actually as a trainer in, in Germany, um, uh, focused on uh, building automation. And uh, with that with KNX for sure. And later on, I took a role on global level for, for training purposes uh, inside our, our business. And today I'm taking care about marketing service and solution support for building automation topics, which are mainly related uh, to KNIX. And uh, uh, before I had a, a technical background, so I'm an engineer for electronics, uh, focus on uh, automation. So that's uh, my, my background. So everything fits together <laughs> to KNIX where uh, all this is, uh, is needed, yeah. Indeed. Uh, Nick, do you want to say a few words about yourself and design innovation? Yeah, absolutely. I'm the founder and director of Design Innovation. Started the business back in 2004, uh, having worked in the pro lighting, sound and AV uh, industry before that and got involved with KNX after a few years when it started to gather ground in, in the UK. We employ three full-time engineers and carry out work largely in residential and some light commercial. Very good. Okay, Kuhn, over to you. Yeah, my name is Kuhn de Kivere. I know it's a very difficult to pronounce typical Belgian name, uh, but that's because I'm the export manager of a typical Belgian company, uh, Basalt. And uh, Basalt is actually a manufacturer since about 14 years now, uh, a manufacturer of um, high-end solutions for the residential KNX smart home market. Actually, before that time, our business uh, went back to being a system integrator ourselves. So we did uh, Crestron uh, installations and it was because we didn't find the right uh, design in smart homes that we also started uh, to become a manufacturer in 2008. And now we have evolved from a keypad manufacturer. A lot of people still see us as a keypad design, keypad manufacturer, but we are evolving uh, to become a complete front end uh, solution for that luxury smart home market. Fantastic, excellent. So we're gonna begin at the beginning. And Olaf, I think it's uh, only right that ABB should, should give us the background on what actually is KNX. Yeah, uh, you may know ABB was a founding member uh, in the 1990s uh, and uh, was a lot of experience in here and uh, we have seen that KNIX uh, and we worked on this as well uh, becomes a global uh, standard it is today so you see not only a lot of manufacturers but KNIX is well received in I would say most of the countries all around the world as a standard for building automation so from that perspective uh, there's a big advantage uh, in this uh, on one hand that there are many manufacturers where you can use products in one system and the other hand, uh, there are a lot of professionals out there in the market, and this is an advantage for the customer, so that they have a huge choice. There's a lot of experience out there, in the system integrators like uh, Vladimir here. I think these are the sides uh, from KNX, which makes it really a reliable standard, because you have, as customer, a big choice on, on solutions and on uh, professionals who can uh, support you or give you the guidance what can be solved and at the end they can uh, install and uh, commission um, your solution and the, the KNX protocol it's it's not just ABB I mean how many no, no. manufacturers now make KNX product oh we are 
approaching 500. So I have not the latest wow. figures. So uh, all around the world, uh, around 500. You can say last year, so every week, a new one came into the game. A lot of people see or recognize this as standard and see this as a big advantage for, for everyone who is involved in this. So if you're looking for something in building control, KNX, a KNX brand will make it, basically. Very good. And, and, and Kuhn, I mean, that, that must have been an attraction for Basalt to, to work with a protocol that's so open. Yeah, of course. Actually, um, originally the KNX, like uh, Olaf was saying, uh, was developed by some major uh, German manufacturers. And if I'm correct, Olaf, then uh, the reason for creating KNX as a, as a standard uh, was because, um, first of all, the big commercial uh, installations uh, where they had to find a solution for a reliable and a reliable and a solid uh, system in these commercial buildings, in hospitals and in airports and so on. What we have seen then over the years that uh, KNX was evolving to also uh, a more uh, approach towards the, the residential market. And that's where Basalt has seen uh, that small gap for the luxury residential market. And that's the nice thing about KNX actually, is that uh, manufacturers, they can focus on what they are good in. We are not developing the complete solution. We are only doing the front end and companies like ABB are then uh, providing uh, other things. And that's the nice thing also for the integrator. They can play around and finding uh, products that uh, suit their uh, projects actually. And Nick, the typical applications that uh, an integrator might expect to use KNX in their home for, what, what might they be? Primarily, it's heating and lighting control. And invariably, most of our, most of our uh, pro projects involve that. And with heating control, I mean HVAC control. So that could include air conditioning as well, if there's air conditioning involved, and ventilation. And then from a residential point of view, convenience of, of shading in terms of curtains and blinds, etc. Um, we've integrated into roof windows, that, that kind of thing where we were able to open a window if it gets too warm in, a, in inside the house. We integrate that into audiovisual systems as well so that the customer sees one graphical front end if necessary. It just depends on, on, on the project. But uh, basically anything that needs to be reliably controlled turns on and off, dims up or down or heats or cools. Generally speaking, KNX is the answer. Reliability, I mean, that's a big thing, right, for integrators? Oh, hugely. <laughs> Of course, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, we, we, you know, we've got installations dating back 10 plus years now, uh, 12 plus years, God, don't think about it. Um, <laughs> and um, we just didn't have problems. Uh, we, we had a, a, a large residential project just north of London a few months ago, which uh, took a lightning strike to a tree in the garden, substantial tree turned the tree into balsa wood basically and ripped through the house and we lost things like the router we lost it was more audio visual based knx carried on working no problem at all it's it, it's it is extremely reliable why why is that olaf why is knx so reliable let's let's get, let's address that for integrators when you think about the communication uh, about the twisted pair cable this is the, the start i would say i know there today other communication uh, wireless communication and ip communication out there but it started with uh, twisted pair uh, communication and um, i would say with a low bandwidth at the beginning some people said oh why do you only use this uh, low bandwidth for the communication and the reason was the reliability so, so you need to find um, a compromise between speed uh, on this communication and the reliability. This was a compromise for if you have huge uh, data to transfer at on the level where AB, uh, where uh, KNX is, is communicating, you don't have this huge uh, data to transfer. When it comes to light switching, it's one bit. Yeah, this single uh, information, it's on or off yeah, and, and that's it. For sure, in a bigger building, there are more data to transfer, but therefore you have the back end or IP today for huge buildings, for instance. But basically, when it comes to the communication inside a single room, there is not, not much uh, data to transfer. And therefore, the design of this bus communication target was to have a maximum on reliability. And it's still alive today. And nothing has changed on this basic communication. So there come more uh, other communication uh, levels uh, into the game, like I mentioned, VIP communication. And today we are talking about secure 
communication, uh, even on, on IP level, which uh, KNX uh, can deliver as well. But on, on the lowest level, and this was a target, and so was the design made. Vladimir, how are you deploying KNX in your business? We have a vast, probably, uh, ability to integrate KNX into building and into control of all mechanical and electrical appliances in the houses and in multi-dwelling developments as well. So mainly, as the gentleman already mentioned, it's a heating and cooling and lighting control, but also we integrate in any other third party uh, devices and the system. So we'll be able to integrate into DALI lighting control and also in all sort of heating and cooling devices. So the brilliance and the beauty of the KNX that by choosing the correct gateway, you can integrate pretty much anything to anything and centralize and bring this into one KNX umbrella, which allows you to ease the full founding and also the reduce the number of, on the service and reduce the number of callouts, reduce the number on service companies, because previously you have to call a couple of companies who's in charge of a heating, who's in charge of a lighting. Now it's only one company who's looking after everything and mm. there is no more finger pointing whose fault is that then it's all saving the money and bring better comfort better flex flexibility and uh, gives a ability to knx integrator to take bigger chunk of a pie if you can say that so they have a big ability to make money on that and, and did you move uh, into KNX from an, an electrical background or were you an AV integrator beforehand? No, we are telecom engineers previously and we have a magnificent story that uh, we went into one of the big projects uh, and we were involved by main contractor to have a look of a network infrastructure and to update the network. And then we met with the owner of the property and he asked us, oh, by the way, do you know what's the KNX? I was like, no, really? No, why? <laughs> Oh, because I have this quotation from a gentleman and it looks bizarre. I was like, okay, may we have a look on that? And that's how it started. Wow. Literally wow. next week, we got to book the course for the KNX just for our knowledge. So instead of saying, what's that? We have to give the answer. And then it's much better to ask to know some other system and to be able to operate other system because it's involved the cables and it doesn't involve the protocols. So for us, it's quite similar. We're already working with a network with different sort of system and obviously integrate different sort of telecom solution. So that was a big yes. And then literally after two weeks, we managed to win the tender to, to do the big house in Regions Park with no idea how to control the windows and do the integration of the weather station. But, oh, wait, uh, the beauty of the KNX world that you can talk to people, you can go to manufacturer and say, guys, what's the solution for this? And they say this, 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 and the best way to go for this manufacturer, if they have a better solution, because different manufacturer, they have a unique selling point and unique, let's say that cherry on the top, which solving just your solution. And that's how we started. And then literally half a year later, we've been uh, finishing the project and everyone, you know, till now we have no problem and we never come back to fix any KNX issue in that property since 2014. That's why the uh, Intex service was born that's by it. getting the project and throw ourselves in the deep water of the KNX. <laughs> That's quite staggering. Wow. Uh, what about you, Nick? How did you, how did your company get the bug for KNX? From our point of view, the, the main driving factor was Colin Price at Ivory Egg, knocking on the door with a gear catalog in his hand. Sorry, I know gear on here, but that's what he, that's what he had in his hand, which we looked at and went, I don't think I can work my way through that catalog at all. Um, <laughs> and, um, he, you know, held our hand and got us involved and um, supported us. We ultimately, we did the training through them. We still have a good re working relationship with them now. We don't need their technical support very, very much because we've uh, we've got our own guys. But um, it was that kind of introduction. Were you doing entertainment systems or AV systems before that? We were doing AV lighting control. We used we were using Dynalight at the time before Philips bought them. Go back into those installations that we did with separate systems, separate heating controls and, and, and lighting controls and go, 
just unrecognizable compared to what we do now yeah. you know in, yeah. in terms of being able to integrate everything together so much easily so what would you say would be the key attractions for integrators why should they get involved in knx it is the the, the reliability uh, the last thing you want to have to do is keep going back into a project the scalability of it you can use it in a single room you can use it in a whole house mdu development the fact that it is largely distributed intelligence so you might have a central processor that's doing the graphical interface or maybe some complex logic functions but when you press the button on the keypad to turn a light on that keypad is communicating directly with that dimmer or switch it's not reliant on a central process so basic functionality just car just carries on working at the end of the day the only common failure could possibly be the bus power supply but you can now put multiple bus power supplies on there and i've never had a bus power supply fail ever so it, it, it is it is very flexible very very solid apart from the audio visual side of it it can handle everything what would you add to that coom what what do you think are the key attractions that, that knx opens up to integrators well like uh, nick was uh, saying it's a decentral system so all intelligence is within the devices itself uh, there is no need for a central processor it can be added to add extra comfort, but the devices itself can talk to each other. So it's like a, a language actually, one people talking to another. As long as they understand the same language, then uh, they know what to do. And the second thing is uh, the multitude of vendors. So like all of us saying, there are almost 500 uh, manufacturers now. Not all of them are offering uh, a Bible, like a complete catalog with uh, hundreds of products. Some manufacturers are only uh, offering a very small uh, piece of the solution, but a crucial one. And that's also an advantage of KNX that you can find for every problem in your installation. You can find more or less uh, a solution native within KNX. And the third uh, kind of very positive thing is for all of these products, they're only using one programming tool. It's called ETS, the software uh, tool. And with that one uh, programming tool, where you do a training uh, for that one programming tool, you can program all these products for, from all of these manufacturers. And I think that's also a big advantage, not having to restart with another uh, software tool to learn every time you start with another product or another manufacturer. How does that work for you, Vladimir, as an integrator using that software tool? Does that, I mean, that must save a huge amount of time and energy, doesn't it? It does. Basically, everything has become standardized. So even if we take the product from, I mean, if we take the project from someone, we've been handing the file. Obviously, every time when you finish the project, you end up with a little file from the ETS, which you can have, you have to give this to a client because apparently this information belongs to a client because this information contains everything about his building, his project and his devices. So sometimes when we take over the project, we've been given this file and for us, it's huge advantage because we are not spending so much time to see what's the system, how the system built and what the other integrators have in mind. So it saves your time. You just get in there. If the system needs to be upgraded, you upgrade it, you add in the other things, and then you give this file back to the owner. And then this owner couldn't pass this file to somebody else. Obviously it doesn't mean it, it gives the owner option and flexibility to choose the integrator. And obviously it saves time to integrate to do other integration or do repairs or do the fault finding or do upgrades for the system. It's universal tool and also at the end of the project, it allows you to do the printout of all information, what you have in a project. So you have a paper copy and you can hand this in your handling process to a client after you finish. So not that he have the house fully working and functional, but he have a peace of mind in paper, which says what each device do and what it does and put you in the way of a professional. So it makes you more professional than others. Yeah, I, I think documentation can be a huge issue for integrators. So, so to have something like that is, is a huge advantage. What have we missed, Olaf? There must be something else that, that ticks the, the box for integrators with KNX. I would uh, to emphasize what Vladimir said. So it gives uh, freedom uh, for the clients as well. So if you overhand the whole project with the right documentation so that he don't have the feeling he's married with one who provided a proprietary system. So it's an open system 
and everyone can manage it and you are not married with the one uh, company who delivered it the first time. So on one hand, and we discussed the topic of many manufacturers and that's what why, why ABB, a lot of effort in KNX and new devices. Some people think, okay, uh, ABB has a huge offering, maybe a logistic offering. I wouldn't say this. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of solutions in, but not every and would never say that ABB has an offering for everything. That's why KNX is theirs because there are sometimes really special solution needed and, and, and there are some, some manufacturers which are focused on this niche and this is an advantage. So that some are very specialized on special functions or uh, special applications and, and then you find the manufacturer today. So at the beginning it was maybe a little bit different, but today you can say there is somewhere an offering from a manufacturer out there. This is uh, what I would like to emphasize one more time. And that's why, why we see uh, KNX has a long history and has still a good future uh, uh, because when you rely on the standard, then you can today solve nearly every application, not with only one manufacturer. That's clear. Yeah. Often you have one choice for, for the front end, one for the back end or for special things. Uh, where some companies are in, uh, but uh, when you look out of the eyes of the client or the customers, uh, then you can say with KNX, you are, you, you are on track and you can system integrator can find uh, a solution, a manufacturer so that you have at the end a holistic uh, system and not different systems or so only one leading system which uh, can integrate every application. Maybe a third party system. So because you mentioned it, Vladimir, there are gateways out. There are a lot of gateways to other systems in so that KNX is a leading system and you can solve applications of the whole building from small residential to big commercial. Well, I wanted to pick up on that point, Nick. I think you mentioned scalability. So yep. typical project, and particularly since KNX came from a commercial world, how do you find it working and, and deploying it in smaller residential projects? You're, you've got the cost of, you know, things like the if you if you're integrating it to a, to an I, to an IP system, the the, the IP gateway, the, the bus power supply. But beyond that, we've you know we've just done a, a cinema room for somebody, and it involves some RGB lighting. Um, and I was going down the DMX route, and in actual fact, using native KNX um, LED controllers worked out more economical than going down the DMX route. Oh, that's interesting. I've got it in my kitchen at home because I haven't rewired the rest of my house, and I rewired the house before we got involved in this. So um, it'll get there eventually. I've just got to persuade the wife. <laughs> um, but uh, um, it, it, it works really well in a in a in a single room solution there um just 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 doing the lighting uh, and we've used it in you know 61 apartment mdus we've used it in 8000 10000 square foot houses uh, you know it, it it is completely scalable at the, at the end of the day and and that's interesting Kuhn, because you could i mean if you look at the world of the cdu integrator perhaps many, many of them start as as nick just talked about from doing a home cinema lighting is obviously a very big part of of those yeah. projects typically but if you want to do more you can do more with knx it is completely scalable in terms of the applications you can use it for as well yes of course um well we were talking about lighting control and blind control and hvac of course and uh, that's also where knx is well known for also for energy monitoring which is becoming more and more uh popular people want to see uh, the energy they're consuming but what we didn't really talk about is also the integration and that was still a gap on the KNX market some time ago the integration of AV because that's typical and I guess a lot of CDM members are also born from out the AV world uh, it's also very typical for the American brands like uh, Crestron uh, like Savant like Control 4 it's all popping out of the AV business and then the rest is lighting control and some blind control. We have seen that gap also with Bazalt and we said, okay, we can do AV control or you can do AV control over an interface, but why not make it native uh, KNX? And that's also something or some part that we are stepping into, uh, into that uh, AV world, but then more or less in a native way uh, without these interfaces, um, because an interface is always a point of failure uh, and you want to avoid that if you can. So so how does integration work from your perspective, Vladimir? Uh, it works absolutely as a trick, to be honest. Uh, thanks to Control 4, because we do installation of Control 4 as well, 
uh, they introduced CanX native, if, if I'm not mistaken, last year. They did introduce the gateway, although I know it's a bit tricky way, so it's not native, but using the control for gateway, which just CanX IP router, but then you open the possibility to integrate all the devices AV, which consists control for native control, into KNX and various vice. So we have a one project when the customer choose to have beautiful ABB uh, room controllers and controlling the control for native lighting. So we be able to cross references to a system with no problem whatsoever. And that's why we always dividing our project in two parts, functional part and design part. So we have to work with the two enemies, architects and designers. We have to cover the functional parts and prove ourselves to ME designer or architects. And of course, we have a longer fight in the history with the uh, interior designers to make sure it looks perfect and it does what it's supposed to do. So for us, integration, uh, it, it opens new page and again it gives you it gives you new ability and chance to earn a bit more money in in KNX world because mm -hmm. you can do easy integration with the control for there is a driver for it what you do you just drop the driver import the project and you have the ability to control whatever is KNX controlling and then every year even because we, we go into ETS all, all, all the time to Amsterdam for the exhibition and uh, you can see there is more manufacturer and there is more people, uh, I'm talking about company who's integrated something into something using the KNX or providing new gateway or providing new IoT solution which become very fancy and popular nowadays, then I think KNX become essential and given another five years, I think the KNX will be all over the place and people don't even realize it. Mm. Quite, quite. I, I was just listening to that, Olaf, and it, it made me think that um, professions, if we, if we talk about the M&E consultant, for, for example, the building services engineer on a project that, that CDA integrators might come up against once in a while, they should be very familiar, shouldn't they, with KNX because it's been around in commercial buildings for a long, long time. Yeah, that is, is uh, so due to the history. So uh, there are many professionals out who, who are used to the system. So it's not a, a problem to find uh, someone who can take care about the system, even if uh, they don't have uh, um, designed or commissioned the, the system. So and uh, for that, uh, one important point is uh, for sure the training. But we see that there are a lot of training facilities out so that uh, everyone can access the right trainings, not only the certification for, for the uh, software, but for further applications. And uh, we see, um, uh, from my experience in Europe, that uh, even on the professional schools, that KNX is now part um, uh, of what they learn. So, the, so like like the the I would say the installer, the electrician learn uh, how they have to deal with 230 volts. They learn how uh, KNX is working. So, the, so from that perspective, you have a huge base of professional who can take uh, care later on, on on the maintenance. So, if uh, a company who uh, has initially uh, designed and uh, installed uh, the application and the system itself, it's later not available or has not the service contract. There are different reason setups how it could work. There are service agents, uh, companies out there taking care about that beside other facility topics uh, there and um, from that perspective. And the other thing, uh, Kuhn, let me come to you on this one, designers and architects who again, you know, can be, it can be a, a slightly abrasive relationship with integrators. If they're given so much choice in terms of product design and styles and brands they can choose from, that must make finding something that will appeal to them a lot easier. Well, yeah, and actually that was the, the reason for our existence, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> is to, uh, to try to make things a little bit more beautiful because we wanted to focus on these uh, aesthetics uh, and, and this design. Um, the technology was already there and it, it's functioning in a great way. It's very solid and robust system, but it's installed sometimes and mostly, and also designed uh, mostly by engineers and by very technical people. 
And that's where the beauty with Basalt comes from. In Basalt, most of the design comes from uh, design-influenced people. And on the back end, uh, we also have our um, people that were uh, running and um, running the in integration business. So they also have that hands-on mentality still from an integrator side. So that marriage between design and technology uh, brought us uh, a nice solution in that. And we feel that it is appreciated by the designers and the architects that we don't push too many technology and gadget uh, stuff in the rooms, but we try to keep it clean, minimalistic, still easy to control and bring a little bit of comfort in that uh, residential uh, installation. That sure sounds familiar. Um, <laughs> Nick, uh, just just talking about some of the, the challenges that, that integrators might face, uh, if if you're not using KNX, you're you're. Uh, I think Vlad mentioned it earlier. You're cutting yourself out from perhaps a part of the the revenue <coughs> for a project that you might otherwise access. Um, what else do you think is is a problem if you're not using KNX for an integrator? You are definitely cutting yourself out from it. Um, you know, I, we we come up. We we also do control four as well as KNX, um, and we come up against uh, you know some competitors who. Um, particularly on the heating side, for example, as far as they're concerned, it's a it's a heat miser gateway, um, and so they're, they're losing out on that that aspect of it, um, and they're not educating the client that you don't need to have a thermostat sitting on the wall, <laughs> because if it's underfloor heating, you don't want people messing around with the temperature at the end of the day. Um, it wants to be kept constant, um, so yeah, I think you are missing out. I think. There is starting, I'm, we're certainly starting to see a shift in focus with a lot of clients. When you walk through the door and you start talking about audiovisual distribution at the AV side of it, home cinema is still very popular, but more and more people are sort of saying, do I, do I need that? I've got Sonos, I've got Alexa, I've got, you know, I've got a Skybox and, and a co I've only got a couple of TVs. Um, you start talking to them about automating true automation in their home and, and that seems to be where more people are starting to to go towards you know we've got a couple of several projects at the moment where we are not there is no audio visual going in the audio visual is a you know is is a is a is a, is a uhf amplifier you know going back to those days you know um and yet they've got blinds they've got windows they've got lighting they've got heating some have got cooling as well the customers just was not interested in that you know they've got one of them's got two tvs in the whole house it's quite happy to have a skybox under one and a, and a mini box under the other and as far as he's concerned it's got a smart tv you know a lot of the stuff that we used to distribute is now native on the tvs um so i, I think with, we will we will see a shift in focus in, in in this industry more towards the kind of home automation as opposed to you know uh, the audio visual side of it which is exactly where it was when i started to get into the into this market um it was very av centric with a bit of lighting chucked on the on the top of it i think that's really interesting we're talking there vladimir about a much broader definition of smart home smart home for our industry the the home integrator has typically been entertainment led but what nick's saying is that it's it's going to be a much more traditional smart building than perhaps integrators typically think about absolutely so what are we talking about we're talking about comfort of living and now the comp we're providing by using knx as a tool that comfort to your clients and what give us, gives us it's a huge flexibility massive tool to provide that beautiful comfort and using all aspects it's i think so far it's the best thing in the market what are what are the barriers do you see olaf why why might people be resistant to embracing knx in the home space yeah i think one one of the uh, um common failures is uh, when you're talking about smart home and uh, Vladimir pointed on that people won't uh, expect comfort and uh, some um, I would say some some professionals are not that good in selling because they are talking about the technology talking about KNX mm -hmm. so and the customer don't care so he would trust every technology technology you you suggest 
uh, because you are the expert and uh, talk about what is possible. And you, uh, in your backend, know that Knix is the most reliability, reliable uh, system. So, which which you uh, uh, which is your choice. Uh, but the end consumer don't uh, really uh, take care about it. You can talk about it, so when they're thinking, oh, hey, uh, can I rely on your solution? Then you can say, hey. Uh, it's a global standard. Uh, there are a lot of um, um, professionals and manufacturers out there and a lot of uh, uh, projects and uh, the system has uh, um, uh, more than 30 years history. So you can trust on this. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So that's what you would say on this. But a lot of people talking about the technology and uh, the things uh, which um, on, on technology side are possible, but not about uh, the applications, which are the cool things, which are bring you the comfort uh, or the efficiency. So I have a lot of people talking today uh, that they uh, uh, would like to have this remote control uh, to control their, their home because they're out uh, and would see what's there or uh, control their, their heating. Yeah, that's a really uh, a common application today. Yeah. And these are the things which makes a, a home then really smart. So, so the more that an integrator finds out about it, gets used to it, the more experienced they become, mm -hmm. the the better the experience will be for their customer. Is is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's definitely one part because you can uh, uh, install or commission the system. Um, let's say, um, for instance, take the user operation on the wall. So uh, <clears throat> where before was a switch, and then you place there two, three, four, five sensors. <laughs> And it becomes more complicated for, for the client uh, without considering scenes that you have just uh, two or three or four buttons where you have the scenes, what you are used to. So that you have a, a, a dining scene, a TV scene and so on, and not switching every single piece on and off, So which makes it rather complicated. But the customer expects that it's more comfortable, it's easier and think about how you solve it and uh, 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 not to think from technology perspective that you have to control every single thing from everywhere. Mm. It's a, a huge keypad, which is then quite complicated. So think about yeah. how you can make it easy. And scene control is one cool thing in, in a smart home and where you can integrate not only lights and so uh, even the audio video can be integrated. So if you think about the coming home scene, just as an example, so just by a push of one button or by a voice control, uh, then uh, your home gets into the right mood, including light, heating, shading, music, and so on. So this is possible, and this is what people expect from a smart home. Uh, yeah. Okay. What what other barriers might there be, Kuhn? Do you do you see anything that that uh, perhaps puts integrators off KNX? Of KNX, well, I would like to add one thing um, on the other topic before uh, still. Um, comfort could for the end customer also be the re reliability because, um, mm -hmm. well, you know, proprietary systems, they come and go. It's not a problem when they come, but if they go, you have a huge problem, not only as an integrator, but also as an end customer. Mm -hmm. uh, with KNX, I'm not saying that no KNX manufacturer will, will go uh, eventually, but you will always have the opportunity or remain to have the opportunity to swap uh, the old product and just change it by uh, another product doing the same thing or more or less the same thing. So it's not your complete installation, which is going to be uh, rubbish at a certain point in time. Um, the other question, I'm sorry, Jeff. Uh, yeah, just just really, why might there be a barrier to, to adopting KNX in the home? Well, one thing might be uh, the software tool because mm -hmm. there is a, a price tag uh, on ETS. It's not uh, free of charge because it's an individual uh, institution that is developing the ETS software. So it comes with a certain price, but on the other hand, for that price, you also get a multitude of products that you can program with only that single uh, software license. So that might be a, a reason why people do not want to invest in KNX because there is a first investment in the software as well. Um, but, but Kern, yeah. well, if I might add something, this might be a barrier for, for the professional, but not for the end consumer because no, he has for the end consumer. chase the software. Yeah, yeah. 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 correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. For, for the for the professional, I meant that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Specifically. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but I think I think it's like anything new, Coon. You know, if you if you're going to invest in something, you you know you've got to go True. for it. And and 
Nick, I mean, you were brave enough all those years ago to to, to go for it. And, uh, yeah. you know, you've seen the benefit of that to your business as a result. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. The next side of what we do is is, is massive. <clears throat> absolutely. Absolutely massive. Yeah. I, I can, I can understand traditional, you know, AV focused integrators being a little bit um, concerned about getting into the world of KNX. What I would say is whatever you do, don't go on the KNX certification course one week and then walk onto your first massive job the next. Um, because inevitably, there is a good way of putting together a group of just structure and there is a bad way of doing it. There is not a right way because everybody does it differently. Um, but you need to gain some experience and play around with it. In terms of how you do that, you, you latch onto a good wholesaler that has the technical knowledge to enable you to a has a good range of products that they trust and that you adopt and and i think some people might be concerned you know how can you cope with with 500 plus different manufacturers where do i start you know um and the answer is you talk to those that are supplying it or other integrators we're always happy to talk if they're offering the training but also have they got good technical backup can you pick up the phone and just say trying to do this is which how, how would you approach it you know yeah. <laughs> or a, what gateway would you use or whatever um and i think that that's important you know i've got one of one of my guys has done the advanced certification course um and i think you know that you can go higher in terms of training i i could think it might look a bit daunting to some integrators <laughs> when when you see what knx is because it's quite alien to uh, once you embrace it you run with it and mm -hmm. you you develop your own way of doing things you develop your own range of products that you you use um it doesn't really matter what what you use in the background as long as it does the job because the customer never sees it um and you sell keypads and interfaces basically yeah. is what you sell <laughs> yeah um, it's a very and different approach and from what I understand, Vlad, you you actually let's talk about training because you do some training on KNX as well, I believe. Is is that true? And and what are the routes into KNX for integrators? Well, to be honest with you, the best route, of course, is to do the training. At training, it's a fundamental, and I'm not talking about just KNX certification. I'm talking about try to visit as much as possible webinars from manufacturer because every time when a manufacturer do the webinars about new things so new devices new solution or new implementation on the same devices it's crucial for you to understand those little uh, specifics and sometimes it clicks in your brain when you're going to implement it to the next project and plus you have to be all not you have to preferably you have to be up to scratch to what's new what's the latest what's the best and what's the most robust that will save you a time and that will build your unique solution and your unique approach to clients and approach to solving the problems and to bring the solution because it's the solution that's where you sell and providing this solution is very important to gain more business and gain more investments let's put it that way uh, because we're working on behalf of bemco as well so bemco providing the essential KNX course as well as professional KNX and also HVAC. I always say, please try to sign yourself for the course. You think you know everything about KNX, but please do go to the course specifically for HVAC. There is lots of specific things. A little tick could ruin your life. A little tick which you missed in the controller could change everything and you can spend a day just to try full finding. Please don't be ashamed to call your colleagues, call your supplier and say, listen, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Find me someone. Don't be ashamed. Invite someone, buy him a couple of beers and say, please spend an hour with me. Explain me because I don't understand that something or something doesn't work the way or where is this sub menu? Because it could be a bit complicated when you go to ETS. There is lots of menus, sub menus, ticks and, and stuff. You get used to it, but it takes time takes time and takes some knowledge but when you get over this you become the master of the remote and you're going to be implementing whatever and makes the system flying and that's what's important that's what we all want and i think it is worth pointing out at this point that cdu is launching a uh, hybrid 
KNX Basics course, um, and I think if you if you go to CDS website, you can find out more about that, which I think will be very attractive to integrators too. So, right here we go. Final piece of advice for CDS members thinking about KNX. I'm going to start with you, Olaf. Uh, I would catch up with Vladimir's uh, statement. So uh, the training is essential and uh, not, not only the basic course, you need some experience on certain products and applications. And uh, that's what uh, we providing and, and uh, uh, many other um, uh, training centers or manufacturers as well. Just to example, last week we had uh, uh, training about um, how to integrate the DALI and how to apply the dim to warm function, which is uh, uh, today, uh, today uh, quite uh, uh, common. Or this week we had a training uh, about um, the uh, uh, security on the IP side with the IP routers, uh, which are, uh, have now the security function in, in terms uh, of uh, prevent for uh, cyber attacks on, at, at your home, because this is uh, um, today um, one um, thing where smart home owners think about it because when you're thinking about cool things connected with mobiles and so on, what is about uh, attacks on that? So, and this is then an application. So basically, okay, you need the base knowledge about how the KNX works, but then um, everything around what is possible with it, the application is important. Uh, one piece is <laughs> you gain experience with your projects. Uh, but uh, first, for sure, you have to start uh, with, with uh, some more training. So uh, training. it's the, the uh, investment uh, at the beginning uh, to train uh, yourself, uh, your colleagues or employees or whatever um, to have a good start. And, and what would you say, Nick? What, uh, what words of wisdom would you share with the integrators thinking about dabbling in KNX? Uh, I think you've got to commit to it and invest in it. Um, I think if you do it half-heartedly, um it will it will backfire on you at the end of the day it is worthwhile investing ets is going to cost you money certification course is going to cost you money most of the other courses manufacturer led don't um, cost anything and obviously now as most of it is online and the webinars it actually doesn't involve a trip down to london or to uh to ivory a or something which it has has done in the past um so it's actually a lot easier to uh you know what we're doing here, I'm sitting in my desk, it's, it's great, I haven't done to travel anywhere. Um, it's not good for my mileage claim, but anyway, um, it's, uh, it, it is easy to access into manufacturer training. And even if you don't use that manufacturer specific product, it applies to lots of other products as well. Uh, and you might, and you will learn something. You will always learn something. One of the things that we did, and this was what Colin recommended we did, because our first project turned out to be quite a sizable project, um, was we actually paid, at the time that we were getting into it, which will have been 2007, something like that, there were very few system integrators in the UK. Um, and we had one locally to us who uh, was dealing with Ivory Egg, and uh, we actually paid him a day to sit down with, with my single engineer at the time, some chap from New Zealand called Mark, um, who, uh, <laughs> yes, sorry. Coming on next, we've got to be careful what we say. My fault, it's all my fault. Um, uh. <laughs> and um, that was very valuable because you learn how someone else has implemented it. And you don't mind unless you always follow that, but you're getting that help from somebody who's done it before. Yeah, I think I think that's good to point out about this. Uh, let's just underline it: supportive KNX community out there to help. Extremely, um, yeah, very. Kuhn, come on then, your turn. What would you uh, give us a piece of advice to integrators thinking mm -hmm. about KNX? Well, first piece of advice would be, uh, and it has been said before, but that's really important. In between all of these thousands of products, don't try to do all of it, but stay focused uh, on a couple of products or brands and dig deeper into these features that these products can offer you. And uh, you can do that through the webinars, but Nick, I remember you coming over to Belgium a long time ago. I yes. think I'm longing for uh, people <laughs> to, <laughs> to visit the our showroom at headquarters again and, and discuss uh, projects and KNX and uh, life in general over a good glass of beer. So uh, yeah. my final piece of advice would be just come over to Belgium and we will have a good time together while learning about KNX and about uh, bringing comfort to your customers' homes. Sure. Understood, understood. Okay, Vladimir, you've got the final word on this discussion. 
Sure, please check your local supplier, whatever you decide to have in Wordwares, just to make sure you build good relationship with your supplier, because the supplier will give you a beautiful list of the best project, products, sorry. And also they put you in contact with your, let's say, KNX uh, guru or consultant who can help you. And sometimes they most of the times it's absolutely free of charge. Just talk to supplier. They, they will have a look on your project and they will guide you and that will save you lots of time, lots of hiccups and avoiding lots of troubles. And every time we stress this on the course, please talk to us. The, bo the best things what could happen, you just ask the question and we have an answer straight away. That's important. Talk to people. Don't try to organize yourself because you think you are the best. Yes, you are, but you just started this journey. And let's talk to people who's already on the path on the middle <laughs> somewhere. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Nick, Olaf, Kuhn and Vladimir. Some, some really great insights there into, into KNX basics from you all. And I really appreciate your time today.